Okay, welcome everyone to um, our, our ZEG seminar today. Um, so Shihoko, she will talk about uniform bound of the number of weighted blobs to compute MLD in dimension three. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. For introduction. Yeah. Hello. Good morning and good evening, everybody. I'm very happy to have the occasion to give a talk in this seminar. The title of my talk is a uniform bound. Oh, sorry, uniform bound. A weighted blow up to compute MLD in dimension three. Is it too big? Okay. So this is a program of my talk. First, I will give you the preliminaries and then prototype and motivation. And at last, I will show main result. Okay. The first. Let me show the rough description of my result. The MLD of a general three-dimensional pair is computed by at most two weighted blow-ups. Here is the terminologies, MLD, general, uh, pair, computed by, and weighted blow-ups uh, will be explained in the talk. Okay, uh, this statement is based on the following result for two-dimensional case. It's uh, the MLD of any two-dimensional pair is computed by one weighted blow. Here are different uh, dimension and also the number of blow up, weighted blow up. Here is one and here is two. Other than those, there are different, there it is different. Uh, any two-dimensional pair, but here is a general three-dimensional pair. Here is no restriction of the pair, but here is a mild restriction about the pair, okay? Now we are going to give some setting. This uh, basic setting which will be used throughout this talk. K is algebraically closed field of arbitrary characteristic. And R is a smooth variety of dimension N defined over K. And N is uh, later, N becomes uh, three later, but at the beginning, N can be arbitrary. Uh, zero is a crossed point. We study a pair. Pair is uh, two things. Uh, this is a smooth variety and R. R is a formal product of the coherent ideal sheaves like this with a real positive exponent here. Okay, we call such R a real idea. There is a symbol A and also later small letter A also appears. So in order to distinguish, we pronounce this A uh, according to the German pronunciation. Okay, now we start the definition. Prime divisor over A. E is called the prime divisor over A with the center at zero. If there exists a proper vibrational morphism phi from normal A tilde to normal A tilde to A, sorry, such that E is a prime divisor on A tilde, satisfying the image of E by phi is exactly the closed point zero. In this case, we say E appears on A tilde. Okay, now next is the definition of log discrepancy. Let E be a prime divisor over A with the center at zero 
for a pair, we define a number a in this way, ke plus one minus summation ei ve ai, where ei is exponent. Okay. Here on the right hand side, a ke appears, but the ke is a coefficient of the relative canonical divisor k a tilde a at e, where a tilde is a normal variety on which e appears. A v e is a valuation corresponding to e, and v e r i is a minimal value among these value if it's an element of Ri. So the next is a minimal log discrepancy. A minimal log discrepancy is defined uh, MLD. That symbol is MLD. It's abbreviation of minimal log discrepancy at zero of this pair is the uh, infimum of this number uh, log discrepancy at E. And E is uh, prime divisor over A with the center at zero. We remark that if N is greater than or equal to two, then we have either uh, MLD is non-negative or MLD is minus infinity. Okay. Next is the definition of prime divisor computing MLD. A e is a prime divisor over A with center at zero. We say that E compute MLD zero AR if either a log discrepancy at E is exactly give the number of MLD. So this happened in this case. And over log discrepancy is negative. In this case, this happened. Okay. About the existence of the prime divisor computing MLD, uh, this is a remark. If this pair AI AR is uh, from R, you ignore the exponent, then you obtain this product. And this one is a maximal ideal of zero. Then make this product and make a pair. If this pair has a log resolution, then there exists a prime divisor computing MLD. Zero a r. So you know that if characteristic of k is zero or uh, the dimension of a is less than or equal to three, then log resolution exists for every pair. So in these cases, prime divisor computing its MLD always exists. So we are focusing in this talk, uh, three-dimensional case of arbitrary characteristics. So in our case, um, prime divisor computing MLD always exists. Now, the definition of weighted blow up. Maybe it's well known, but we write down the let P be a point not necessarily close point, but uh, since we assume that A is smooth variety, P is always smooth point. So there exists a regular system of parameters of local ring at P. Uh, we abbreviate regular system of parameter by RSP. 
Now, let W be an uh, integer value vector with the same number of entry with this, okay? With uh, greatest common divisor is one, okay? In this situation, we define the ideal I n by the ideal of O R, O A, excuse me, uh, generated by all monomials of this form, where exponent S i, S c, satisfy these inequalities. Then you construct a graded link by these ideals and take a project and uh, there exists a canonical projection to A. This projection is called the weighted blow up at P with weight this way, this way. Then the exceptional divisor for phi is irreducible and isomorphic to a weighted projective space and it's called a prime divisor obtained by a weighted blow up. Here, uh, maybe uh, some sensitive person may say that uh, uh, we should uh, put the, here, here is a, a base scheme, base, base field P, K, W1, WC where k is a residue field of p. So this, the base field is not original small k. Okay. Now, if you are familiar to the toric geometry, you may prefer such a kind of description. If uh, a is uh, affine space and uh, p is the uh, origin, and the x1, xn is a coordinate of a n, then a corresponds to uh, n dimensional cone here, and the weighted blow up at zero with weight, this one, correspond to the subdivision of sigma by adding this one dimensional cone, W is uh, this given integer uh, vector, okay. Now uh, I'm going to the next section, prototype, prototype. I will show a two-dimensional prototype for my goal. Uh, this theorem is proved by Kawakita uh, in characteristic zero and verified to be hold in positive characteristic two uh, by using Ishii-Legela's inversion of adjunction for positive characteristic. So the statement is assume n equal to for every e prime divisor over a with center zero there exists prime divisor obtained by one weighted blow up at zero such that this equality uh, log discrepancy at f is less than or equal to log discrepancy of e for every pair satisfying this condition. So the meaning of this theorem is that the, this inequality implies that the prime divisor F is better than E in order to approximate MLD because MLD is the uh, infimum of these values. So this one is uh, closer to infimum. So uh, this is better than this. 
So the, this theorem states that beta uh, divisor is obtained by one weighted graph. It means that you can get a better divisor by a simpler way. This is a statement. Okay, so the point here I say, uh, I, I repeat, a beta divisor F is obtained by simple construction by one weighted graph. Okay, now uh, this theorem uh, says that uh, F is constructed concretely from E. You can see it by the proof. The divisor F does not depend on the choice of a A. So this inequality hold for every pair with this property. So it's a quite strong theorem. This is my prototype. As a corollary of this theorem, we obtain that for n is two, then MLD is always computed by a divisor obtained by one weighted blower for arbitrary characteristic. The proof from the theorem to corollary is if MLD is uh, greater than or equal to zero, then apply the theorem to the divisor E computing MLD. Then F also computing MLD. F is obtained by one weighted blower. Okay, if MLD is minus infinity, then you can take an appropriate T so that MLD exponent T equals zero and apply theorem to a divisor E computing MLD equals zero. Okay, so next one. You can see that two dimensional case. So how about higher dimensional case? The following example shows that one weighted blow up is not sufficient. Okay, uh, assume the characteristic is not two or five, and let A be a three dimensional affine space, and R is a principal ideal with this exponent, uh, where F is of this form. Then a uh, divisor computing MLD, this becomes zero, computing MLD is not obtained by one weighted blow up. This is uh, written in the book by Koti Kola Smith in this uh, example. Okay. On the other hand, there is a sequence of weighted blow ups, phi one and phi two. Phi one is the usual blow up at zero, and phi two is a weighted blow up with weight one two at the curve here on E1, where E1 is the exceptional divisor here. Okay, this E1 is a projective plane, so this homogeneous coordinate by this homogeneous coordinate, this one gives a curve. So take this curve as a center with weight, then we obtain the weighted blow up. Then we obtain uh, exceptional divisor for phi two, then phi this E2 compute MLD equals zero. So if you take two weighted blow up, then you obtain uh, from divisor computing MLD. 
So it is natural to think of this conjecture. Assume n is greater than or equal to 3 uh, for every prime divisor over a with center 0. There is a prime divisor f obtained by at most n minus 1 weighted blow ups such that uh, f is better than e for every ar with this property. And f should not depend on the choice of r. This is a high, higher version of a prototype, two-dimensional prototype. Okay. Now, corollary of the conjecture. If the corollary uh, conjecture hold, then following conjecture uh, corollary will hold. Uh, assume n is greater than equal to three, then MLD is computed by a divisor obtained by at most n minus one weighted blowups. Okay, the proof is just the same as uh, in the two-dimensional case. Now we go to the motivation. I will present two motivation. The first motivation is that uh, it is a uh, corollary of conjecture is a weighted blow up version of Mustaz and Nakamura's conjecture. Mustaz and Nakamura's conjecture is as follows. For fixed exponent E and dimension N, there exists a natural number such that a prime divisor computing MLD is obtained by at most this number times blow up. This is a usual blow up, not weighted blow up. Okay, so this is a Mustata Nakamura's conjecture. And note that the bound this one depend on the exponent E, but uh, the weighted version or a weighted version does not depend only on the uh, dimension. Okay. This is the first motivation. And I think uh, Mustaza Nakamura's conjecture should be true because this is equivalent to the very natural conjecture of arc space. So I believe that it should be true. So second motivation, uh, about the second motivation, and there are four slide. So this is the first slide. A conjecture may be useful for the following dream. Maybe I cannot say it's a conjecture. I, I can say just a dream. The dream is like this. A characteristic is positive. So for every pair of this type of positive characteristic field, there exists a pair of the complex number field such that the R, R tilde modular P reduction becomes R and MLD, both MLD coincide. This is a kind of bridge between uh, characteristic zero and positive. So if the dream comes true, then some statement which hold in characteristic zero also hold in positive characteristic. For example, finiteness of the value of MLD for fixed E this is uh, proved by a uh, Kawakita in the characteristic zero. But if the dream is true, then the, it holds also the positive characteristic case. And also ACC conjecture, 
ACC conjecture is not yet proved even in uh, uh, characteristic zero. But if it's proved in characteristic zero, then uh, if dream is true, then it also holds a positive characteristic case. Okay, now second slide, uh, motivation continue. The dream comes true when the following problem is affirmatively solved. It's called the lifting problem. If characteristic is positive, a uh, pair of uh, the positive characteristic is given uh, for every prime divisor E over this uh, positive characteristic affine space with center at zero. Is there a prime divisor E tilde over uh, affine space of a um, complex number field with center at the origin and the real ideal R tilde on here, such that R tilde modulo P reduction is R and uh, this inequality hold. Okay, here is uh, uh, over C and here is a positive characteristic. Okay, this is a lifting problem. If this is true, then the dream comes true. Okay, if our conjecture hold, our conjecture, our conjecture is about the weighted blow up uh, conjecture, then we can reduce lifting problem into a simpler prime divisor obtained by at most art, <laughs> not to. Sorry, it's it's not two. Uh, N minus one weighted blow up. Okay. Uh, indeed, conjecture implies this one. Our conjecture weighted. This is obtained by N minus one weighted blow up, and uh, this is arbitrary divisor. If this hold, then uh, once lifting problem is true for F, then this equality hold, then just combining two equality, inequality, we obtain this. So this means that lifting problem is reduced to F. Yeah, F is uh, simpler than original E. So it seems that for simple E, lifting problem seems easy. For example, uh, for arbitrary dimension, if F is obtained by one weighted blow up, then lifting problem is affirmatively solved. By this, we obtained the, you know, that the, two-dimensional result I introduced. It's a kind of prototype and the corollary of the prototype. If n is true, the uh, dream is true. Moreover, uh, the set of MLD is uh, coincide with the uh, set of MLD of uh, the complex number field. So, this is a positive characteristic, and this is a complex number field. Okay, yeah, the dream, if dream is true, it just say that MLD of the uh, positive characteristic pair is included by the set of MLD of a complex number field. But uh, two-dimensional case, this set coincide. Now, if F is obtained by two weighted blow up, it's uh, for three-dimensional case. The, then the construction of F tilde and A tilde seems much easier than for generally. But it's uh, it's not 
done in progress. But anyway, it's another story. Okay, so let me state the main result. So it's a third section. Okay, theorem one, assume n equals three for any prime divisor over A with the center at zero, there is a prime divisor F as follows. Uh, F is better than E to appro approximate the uh, MLD uh, for every pair with this property, such that R is general for E. Here, this is not yet proved or defined. Later, I will define. F is obtained by at most two weighted blower. Okay, here one can construct F concretely from E. The choice of F does not depend on the choice of R, but R must uh, satisfy this condition and also this condition. Okay. As a corollary we obtain, assume n equal three and R is general for uh, a divisor F computing MLD. Uh, then the MLD is computed by a divisor F obtained by at most two weighted blow-ups. The proof is the same. Okay. The second theorem is if n equals three for any prime divisor E over A with the center at zero, there is a prime divisor F as follows. Here, log discrepancy of F is less than or equal to E. So F is better than E for every a pair such that A general for E and MLD is greater than or equal to one. So this is a stronger statement than theorem one. This one, very strong. Then F is obtained by one weighted blow up. And the corollary of theorem, if n equals three, R is general for a divisor F computing MLD, which is bigger than one. Then the MLD is computed by a divisor F obtained by one weighted blow up. Okay, by the way, I can tell you, maybe it's well known if for the three dimensional case, N three, if MLD zero A R is greater than or equal to two, then the MLD is computed by a divisor obtained by one usual blow up. I think this is well known. Okay. Now, in order to define uh, general and also in order to construct uh, uh, weighted blow up, we need uh, some definition. The first definition is a standard system. Let P be a smooth point 
not necessarily closed. Let E be a prime divisor over A with center P, a regular system of parameter of uh, this local ring is called a standard system. If the following hold, uh, take V1 as a value, valuation of XI, then you obtain the collection of uh, integers you should uh, they should satisfy the first c minus one coincide and the last one may be bigger okay and the second condition is that the first one should be minimal among this value and the last one should be maximum among this value. In this case, we define the uh, integer vector like this, uh, this integer vector divided by greatest common divisor. And we called this div, uh, vector a uh, standard weight for E at P. Okay. For, we should note that for every A, P, and E as above, there exists a standard system of uh, this one. So, on uh, any uh, smooth point, you obtain the standard system. And uh, let A, P, and E be as above, and let this one be a standard system of E, and this is a standard weight. The weighted blow up of weight V prime with respect to a standard system is called a standard blow up for E. Okay, now this is uh, uh, we required for two dimensional case. Given a prime divisor E, the Kawakita's theorem construct F by a standard blow up for E. So for n equals three, given a prime divisor E, we construct F by the sequence of two standard blow ups for E. But here you may worry about the second blow up is possible or not, because we define the weighted blow up only on a smooth point. But this lemma guarantee that second blow up, second weighted blow up is possible. Let E be a prime divisor over A with center at zero. And this one is a regular system of parameter. And uh, VI is a value of the disvaluation of XI and make a integer vector and uh, divide it by greatest common divisor. Okay, then you obtain V prime. Here, you need not uh, this to be standard system. Any regular system of parameter is okay. Now take a weighted blow up with respect to this regular system of parameter of weight V prime. E1 be the exceptional divisor of phi1. The, let's see be the center of E on A1. P is the generic point of C. 
then uh, P is uh, outside. P is, of course, on E1, but uh, P is outside of the uh, what is it? coordinate hyper, hyper surface. Okay. This is uh, this weighted homogeneous space, we, uh, sorry, weighted projective space. In particular, P is a smooth point because the A1 may have a singularity because it's obtained by the weighted blower, but uh, the singular locus is concentrated in this set. So P is a smooth point. So you can uh, make a weighted blow up uh, after one weighted blow up. So the second weighted blow up is possible. Okay. Now, back to N equals three, uh, I should explain what is general for E on E1. To define it, we need the notion back curve on E1. Uh, let E be a prime divisor over A with standard weight here. Because this is standard weight, this one and this one coincide. Let E1 be the exceptional divisor obtained by standard blow up. A curve B is with the following property is called bad curve on E1. First, in order to bad curve exists, uh, V1 prime is less than V3. This and this are different. It means that 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1 is not allowed. Okay. The second condition is that B is defined by the equation in this form. Okay, this is a degree V prime according V degree V1. And B should contain the center of E. This is a definition of bad curve. So Bad curve is the uh, smallest degree uh, curve, high, yes, smallest degree curve on E1. And if it contains the center of E, then it's a bad curve. Now, uh, as a remark, I should say that a uh, bad curve does not always exist. But if a bad curve exists, then it is unique. Okay. Now, general for E on E1, let E and E1 be as above, and for a real ideal R, denote the weak transform on R uh, of R on A1 by this one. A uh, real ideal R is called a uh, general for E on E1 if the, uh, the re, um, how to say, the, this one. Weak transform restricted to E1. The, the locus of weak transform restricted to E1 is, uh, does, does not contain the bad curve as an irreducible component. Okay. So the example 
if the center of E on A1 is a curve of degree greater than V1 line in this weighted projective space, then every R is general for E because uh, under this condition, there is no bad curve. Okay. And next example is that if F is a principal and with the exponent some E, then R is general for E if and only if the initial term with respect to V prime of F uh, the locus, its locus in E1 does not contain the bad curve. This is equivalent that any linear term of initial form uh, does not vanish at the center of E. Okay, so this condition, this condition, the idea, uh, this locus does not contain the bad curve is an open condition. So you may allow me to call such a, a general. Okay. Now let me give you uh, a proof of theorem one and construction, how to construct to F. Given E, given E, take a standard blow up first and let E1 be the exceptional divisor for pi 1. And if uh, E1 uh, is better than E2 already, then E1 is a required F. So we are done. So assume contrary. Uh, C is the center of E and P is a generic point of C. We divide the case into two. Uh, first case, if C is a curve, regard uh, the germ of uh, A1 P, A1 at P as a point of smooth surface. So let E be the obtained by a standard blow up at P. So it's a surface discussion. E2 is required F. This is by using two dimensional result. But we should be careful because uh, uh, two dimensional result is uh, the proved the on the base field of base field is uh, algebraically closed field. This germ is not defined of algebraically closed field because the residue field of P is not algebraically closed. So uh, we should uh, do some procedure. So this uh, extend this to the algebraic closure of the residue field of P and then uh, apply the two dimensional uh, re result and then push it back to this one. So it needs two steps. It's not automatic, but use the induction of dimension. The second case is C is a point. By using generality of R, the possibility is uh, very limited. V prime R one one n or two two three. If V prime is one one n, then we have a contradiction. Contradiction means if you assume this and uh, assume this, then this does not happen. Okay. 
and the second case may happen. And uh, in this case, by special treatment, E2, second standard blow up gives the F. This is a, a proof of theorem one. And uh, this proof uh, suggests a higher dimensional proof for the conjecture. Okay, assume n is greater than or equal to four, and uh, the assume the theorem holds for dimension less than n. Then given n, uh, take a standard blow up and the uh, exceptional divisor, uh, E1 is the exceptional divisor for phi1. And if uh, in this uh, situation, E1 is better than E, then E1 is the required F. So we are done. So assume contrary. Let C be the center of E and P is a generic point then we divide uh, the situation into two cases. First case, the dimension is greater than zero. Then we can regard uh, the germ of this pair as a point of a smooth variety of dimension less than equal to n minus one. Then uh, apply the lower dimensional result. So it's a kind of uh, uh, okay. So we reduce to the lower dimensional case. The second case is uh, dimensions zero by using generality of R, the possibilities of V prime are only finite. This is known. So we should do uh, some special treatment as we do in the three-dimensional case. Okay, so This is references. And also this following is also the references. And the last slide. Thank you for listening. Finished. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Um, thank you very much. Are there any questions? Uh, so just a curiosity. Uh, you state for, uh, the for theorem one and theorem two for dimension three. Yeah. You think there can be a, a theorem three in dimension four and so on, in the sense that uh, uh, looking at either uh, MLD, mm -hmm. you can have a smaller number of weighted, uh, weighted uh, blow ups. Excuse me. Uh... So uh, I didn't. Get to... So, so uh, okay. Can you go please to the slide of theorem two? Okay. Then, uh, maybe it's easier to. Mm -hmm. Maybe. This one. Yes. Yes. So, yeah. do, do you think that uh, if we assume, for example, n equal to four? Then for MLD greater or equal than two, we can find one blow up, then greater or equal than one. Maybe, two, maybe. I didn't up. check. I didn't check. It's possible. Okay. Uh, my question is was just if you think it is a plausible 
It's tough to think. Okay, thank you. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's interesting. <laughs> I imagine that, but I didn't check yet. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, thanks, uh, Shoko. Let's yeah. thank our speaker again. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So. Okay.